it looked like somebody was bent over and had their head in the window of the deer blind. It either heard me or smelt me, and he pulled his head out of the tent and stood straight up, and that that shocked me. They don't make people that that big. The way it moved, uh, almost as if it was gliding across the beach. I've never seen anything move like that in my life. They were screaming at each other in gibberish. It sounded like a language and they were chuntering away back and forwards, back and forwards, back and forwards. I know what a bear looks like and there is no way on this planet that what I saw were bears. Hi, I'm James Rafer from Liverpool, UK, and I'm listening to real life diabolical accounts on Sasquatch Chronicles. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Got a great show planned for you. Uh, we're going to be chatting with uh, Mike. And Mike comes to us from Mississippi. And Mike's been hunting his whole life, has never seen anything, never really heard anything. Um, and, well, I take that back. He has heard Sasquatch, but he always passed it off as kind of a, a bird in the woods or um, the wood knocks being another hunter, uh, putting up a tree stand, that sort of thing. And it wasn't until December of 2020 when Mike actually had a run-in with two of these creatures while out hunting. A very fascinating account. If you've had an encounter and you'd like to be on the show, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. And if you get a chance, check out sasquatchchronicles.com. You can become a member and get additional shows. Uh, You know, a listener, one of my members, sent me this piece of audio And I'm going to be chatting with him along with a few other guests on Sunday for the members. Uh, But I thought I'd play the audio for you. He recorded it on an iPad and I went through and amplified the noise that he captured. Uh, And what I found strange about it is it's very similar to the Ohio Howl that was recorded back in 1994. Here is the original recording from 1994 in Ohio. And they captured this weird audio uh, while out in the woods. Let's take a listen. really cool is the eyewitness that sent this to me this recording is from 2012 in maine and and bigfoot aside i mean even if you went to a wildlife biologist you'd be like hey identify this animal for me what do you think it is Uh, they're very similar let's take a listen this is 2012 in maine And I got the full story up on the blog. I'll be talking with the eyewitness on Sunday. Uh, His kids even got this weird thing flying in the sky and over the trees. And 
Um, I posted that up on the blog if you want to go look at it. So we'll be chatting with him on Sunday. Uh, Let's jump into it tonight. I want to welcome uh, Mike to the show. Mike, thanks for coming on. How's it going, Wes? I'm doing well, Mike. I'm doing well. Thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing with us what happened to you. I want to ask you, you know, prior to this encounter and being a hunter your whole life, what was kind of your take on the whole Sasquatch subject? I was kind of agnostic about it. I mean, I, I figured maybe it was possible, but I thought all that stuff was out west, you know, with the Gimlin stuff and, the, you know, Canada maybe Alaska, but never down here in the deep South ever. Nothing like that. It's funny to hear you say that, Mike. I hear that a lot from people in the South to where they, uh, they always think it, you know, if it's real, it's a West coast problem. And that couldn't be further from the truth. I, because I swim in this soup every day, I think way more goes on down in the South where you're at, as opposed to the West coast where I'm at. Yeah. And ever since my encounter, I've, really done my research in the last six months and i found like i found your show and stuff like that and i can't believe how much encounters are in louisiana mississippi florida georgia i mean i never knew that yeah there's a lot there's a long history of it down there where you're at and if you go to historical records if you look up wild man or devil monkey or booger that sort of thing you'll find a lot of accounts if you look up sasquatch bigfoot probably not going to find much in the historical records in the south anyways uh if you would mike would you just kind of start from the beginning i know this was about a year ago um a little bit less december 2020 if you would would you just kind of start from the very beginning kind of tell us what you were doing and walk us into what happened okay um i'm from biloxi mississippi which is a little casino town on the uh, Gulf Coast of Mississippi. And uh, down here in the Deep South, when people deer hunt, it, they use dogs. A lot of people, they use a uh, foxhound. They call it the walker. Well, I'm not, in, um, I am a, I'm an avid steel hunter. And to get away from the dog hunting, you have to go into like a, a wildlife management area for steel hunting and stuff like that. Well, on December 14th, I went to a spot that I'd hunted for years and years. It was it was off of a power line. And um, this wildlife management area is uh, it's taken care of by the state. You know, there's plenty of ryegrass fields and stuff like that. Well, that's 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 your hunter's first go to, you know. And, uh, you know, I work on weekends, so I always hunt during the week and um I always put cameras out, and I've never had anything like that show up on a camera or anything like that. It was just very weird. One, you know, I was up the tree one day. I always get pretty high so I can see pretty good. And um, it's starting to give me just a minute, Wes. It's starting to get a little bit of butterfly. It's starting to come back to me a little bit. So anyways, uh, it was probably... 345 ish, 4 ish. Sun, uh, it was getting dark then, probably right at around dark where you can't see, probably around 5 30. Um, at about 345, I heard something coming in the woods behind me. And, you know, it sounded like it had a, you know, a lot of weight to it, a lot of mass to it. You know, at first I'm thinking, okay, it's probably a buck coming in, you know, fixing across the power line. I wasn't on a food plot or anything like that. I always hunted behind where, where I was hunting, I was hunting on a power line behind a food plot because the deer, they get so used to the hunters that they will not come out on the food plots until after dark and eat. They, you know, it, it makes them nocturnal down here. But uh, the way I've always hunted deer is I would always catch them four or 500 yards behind the plot on a power line or something, you know, because what them deer do is that they, they'll get 100 yards from the ryegrass plot and sit there and wait for the sun to go down. And when it, you know, when, when there's no more, when there's no more sunlight, they feel safe and they'll go out there and eat, you know? So, uh, it was coming in behind me and it got on the side of me and it stopped. And I heard heavy breathing, very heavy breathing, like almost labored breathing. It was, it was pretty weird. So, uh, 
I'm sitting there. I couldn't see anything because down here in Mississippi, it's nothing but gallberry bushes and briars and all that crap. You can't see anything. Uh, every year they burn the woods here. That way, you know, they burn all the underbrush, you know, just so you, you can see a little bit. So anyways, this thing is just hunkered down probably, probably 50 yards from me. And it's just sitting there I'm, and, you know, it gets to be 20, 25 minutes later. I can hear it in there. I can hear it in there fumbling around, but it's not really moving. Then it starts to move north, like away from me a little bit. And I'm like, what, what is this thing doing? You know, the whole time I'm thinking, dear, you know, I don't have, you know, is it going to, is it going to wait till it's dark and he's going to hear me come down the tree. And so I'm just sitting there, man. And, I'm like, you know, I'm getting really impatient. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm starting to get pretty pissed off, you know, because the sun, you know, you can't beat the sun. The sun's going down. Then it got silent for about another 10 minutes. And then all of a sudden, out of my right peripheral, I see something black go out onto the power lines, but it's further away. We're talking 100, 125 yards, 130 yards. So I put this thing in my scope. And it, and it looks exactly like a black bear standing on all fours. I know we have black bears. We don't have a lot of black bears. They're federally protected. You, there's no, you know, if you shoot a black bear and game warden gets you, you're going to do federal time. I'm sitting there, and it's just looking ahead, side to side. I, pit, I picked my scope up and looked at it again, and I noticed the right side of its face didn't have any hair. And then this thing sits on its butt like a human being with its arms laid out on the side, feet on the ground. I'm like, well, what the hell is this? And, and, and I'm still, it's not registering in my mind. This is some kind of ape or this is Sasquatch or whatever. I'm like, I, I'm pinching myself. Am I asleep? What is this? It is sitting there, sitting there, and sitting there. I don't know if this thing just smelled me and came in. I don't know if it was just doing its own thing and it never knew I was there the whole time, but it's sitting there. I'm looking at it, and I focused in on it on its back really, really good. I got a really good look at it. I had a, a 3 by 9 by 56 Vortex scope. About, about a $600 scope, pretty good one for for my price range anyways. And I got to looking and this thing, it didn't have like, you know, when you grab a dog by its hide or, or, or if you look at a bear on TV, it didn't have that pelt hive. It was hair, human hair, but long. Imagine a rock star that's got long brown hair. That's what, that's, that's what his hair on his back consisted of. And you can see through it. And you can see his skin. His skin was a little bit ashy, but it was dark, dark brown. And it, it, you know, I hear on a lot of these encounters how, you know, sometimes when these things come in that you get like dread and you start thinking about, you know, bad things and stuff like that it, it just it didn't really do that to me it just piqued my curiosity but the sun was going down and i didn't know what it was i didn't it looked too real to think it was somebody in a suit i knew it wasn't that i knew i was dealing with something paranormal for, at least so i finally got the kahunas up and i started I stood up on my stand and I yelled at it, hey. And when I did that, I don't know. Th these things move like nothing I've ever seen in my life. I'm shaking. <laughs> I'm shaking real bad right now because I'm, I'm, I'm going back to the way this thing moved. Yeah, it's very strange. Almost kind of unnatural. You know what I mean? It's, Wes, it's like this thing popped up, but it's like it was sitting down. It didn't use its legs. I don't know if it just pushed up real quick so fast I couldn't see, but this thing popped up in the air onto its feet and was 
was looking, doing 360s. He could, he was looking for the source of the sound and he couldn't see me. And he started mumbling. He was, he was doing that gibberish stuff that, I, I mean, just that Tasmanian, that, yo, 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 yo. that's what he was doing. But he was talking too. He was like trying to make sentences and I couldn't make, I couldn't make it out. He couldn't see me. Cause I, you know, I was hitting pretty good. I, you know, I had a, I was up 30 foot in a tree, but you know, I, when I hunt, I, you know, I hunt to where I'm not skylined by animals and stuff where they can't see me. He could not make, he couldn't, he couldn't make out the sound. And he, he was just going crazy, man. And then he let out a scream. Oh man. Um, sounded like a, like a lady screaming plus a bull, maybe a bull and a woman screaming. Very extremely deafening loud. Uh, he was very big. He was, uh, he had a huge head on him, cone shaped head, uh, no hair on his face. He had a little, very, very little facial hair, but he had a profound uh, brow ridge. He was unbelievably big, big, big boy. Uh, when, he, when he was walking, his, it, I mean, he was huge. It was like from his, from his waist up, with, with, you know, was pretty big, but his legs and his arms were super long. Like his, like his, his hands were going past his knees and he was looking for the source of the sound. But when he stood up now, when he, when he was standing up, it wasn't like us, man. It was like his, his legs didn't lock out all the way. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they have a very strange way of of their stance, of of a way of standing. I think its knee placement is why it looks so weird, but I get exactly what you mean. Yeah, his knees didn't lock out all the way. It was like they were still bent a little bit. And uh, he he was looking for the source of the sound, man. And he had his back to me. He had, he had his back to me again, and I looked at him again in my scope, man. And I can see his fingernails. He had dirt on his fingernails, like. Maybe when he was sitting down, he might have been digging in the dirt. I don't know. So I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at the sun, man, and this guy's not going anywhere. He's not going anywhere. I'm, you know, I'm thinking, okay, is he, gonna, is he just going to keep going? Is he, but he, wanted, he wanted to know what the source of that sound was. So I looked. I, I finally I just kind of said in a low voice, hey, I'm right here. When he turned around, he looked dead at me. His eyes were solid black, and his eyes got super big, and his mouth opened, and he started smiling. He was, I don't know if that's some kind of defense thing they do or whatever, but he was smiling at me. And he started talking in that gibberish again, and he walked straight to me, 30 yards away. He wouldn't come any closer the whole time. <laughs> I'm looking at him, and I'm starting to think, okay, am I going to get out of here alive? Because I'm up in a, I'm not in a ladder stand, I'm in a jack-up stand. So I have to undo my, I'm thinking about this the whole time. I have to undo my harness, I have to jack down from this tree, and I got to face this animal to get out of here. I, I, the last thing that needs to happen is night needs to fall because I've got a tiny little flashlight. I didn't bring my big flashlight because I knew I was on a power line and I, I knew I can get out. Um, and he's sitting there. Th this encounter went on. He was 30 yards away from me for about a solid 25 minutes. He, uh, he was looking at me, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't look at me for long. It was like he would look away, but he wouldn't move. And every time I looked at him, in his face, he would get, he would look at me crazy and he would smile and he would start grunting. So I tried not to look at him too much. I didn't want to look at him. He, 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 he wasn't no, uh, he wasn't no fashion model to say the least. <laughs> yeah. He had big square teeth like us or kind of looked like horse teeth to be honest with you, but they were perfectly white. And there was one time that he stuck his tongue out. I don't, I don't know what he was doing with that, but he had a big, long pink tongue and the insides of his mouth, like the insides of his cheeks were black. 
but I, I, you know, I, I didn't know what to think, man. You know, I got this creature in front of me. It's daylight still. I can see him, but he's not really, he's not really being aggressive. You know, he, he, it's like, it's, it's like maybe he was curious and I, you know, I'm, I'm scared. I'm out of my mind the whole time, but I'm trying not to panic because I don't want this thing to read all that, you know? So I'm sitting there and I picked up my gun and I looked at him again real close and he backed up when I grabbed that gun again because I had it on the side of me. I picked it up and he backed up and he t turned his head and looked at, at me at the, you know, he, he like, he didn't turn his whole body, he just turned his head to the side and looked at me sideways. I think that's why I think these things know what guns are. It's, it's, it's like I picked it up to look at him real close. I had, to, I had to take my scope and I had to power it down because he was closer. And man, I'm telling you, he... Yeah, and I don't mean to interrupt your encounter, but did, did the creature start backing up at this point? He didn't... Uh, no, he never backed up. He just kind of just turned his head to the side and was looking at me with one eye. Like, don't you do it. That's what, that's what I was getting off of him. Don't you do it. So I started looking at him real close and just the facial, just the facial expressions this thing was making with its, with the side of its jaw. I mean, he had a profound jawline that was just out of this world. It, um, his hair on top of his head was black. Uh, he was solid black hair, but I mean, he, he had a lot of hair on top of his head is what I'm trying to say. Uh, he, um, you know, I'm starting to think, what, what, you know, why, why are we ever told about these things? You know, I, I mean, these. Uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one that's ever seen something like this. I'm not, and, unless this is God trying to tell me something, or is, is, or if this is some kind of demon or what. So he uh, he starts pacing. This thing starts walking back and forth. It's like he's trying to decide if he want if he wants to do something about me or if he wants to go. He keeps walking back and forth, back and forth, grunting, moaning. It's like he's getting impatient. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking to myself, how am I going to get out of here? I'm going home. I'm not going to die. I got a high-powered rifle in my hand, and if I have to put it in his face and take the back of his cap off, I will. But I'd rather not. I just want this thing to go, and I want to get out of here. You know, I'm... I'm half a mile down the power lines and 500 yards down the power lines. So I finally had enough. And I said, what do you want? Very loud. When I did that, this thing freaked out. This thing started screaming again. And he screamed at me real close, Wes. And when he screamed, his eyes closed. And it's like his, his mouth got super big. And it looked like his face caved in on itself and then came back to normal, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it sounds like the creature was really pissed. Yes, and then he kept blowing at me. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he, was, he was hitting me with the... <laughs> it was like, you ain't going nowhere. And when he did them hoods, you can feel it hitting you in your face and in your chest. It was like there was power behind it, man. It's like... I can't explain it. I mean, he, he was far enough away from me then to where there's no way if he blew in the air, I can physically, you know, feel the wind. It had some kind of power behind it. It was hitting me. It was like, it was like, uh, when you're in a parade and somebody's beating that big drum and you, you could, you could feel that drum in your chest. That's what it felt like. Yeah. And he just took off. He ran about 50 yards. He hit that power line. And he went back to all fours, went across the power line, and just started tearing stuff up. He was pushing trees down. He was grabbing gallberry bushes and throwing them in the middle of the power lines. Then he would cross back over the power line behind me, and he was wrecking shit up over there. He finally got, he, he never quit the whole time. He was just going ape shit. And he finally got far enough away from me, I would say 100 yards back there wrecking stuff. 
I come down out of that tree. I jack down like a, like a machine gun. I left stand and everything. I had a four, I had a four hundred dollar Summit Titan that I left on a tree that I did go back and get. By the way, I'll, I'll explain that in a little bit. Uh, I started running down the power lines, and I'm running, and we're talking about a forty five year old chubby white boy scared out of his life. <laughs> yeah, go, going down the power lines. I get about halfway down it. You know, the sun it, it's starting to. It's not dark yet. It's not dark yet. It's uh, it's it's uh, twilight. It's twilight. Sun's done went over the trees, but uh, st- you know the sun's gone. But you still got that little bit of light left. That's what I had. I'm going down the power lines, and I and I'm talking about I get down there real good and fast, and I'm winded, so I stop for a second. Cause I can still hear him back there tearing stuff up, but he's way, way, way away from me now. I'm out of breath and I'm walking fast, trying to catch my breath. So I start, I finally get my wits about me again. Uh, so I just start jogging a little bit cause I'm whooped. I'm out of shape. All of a sudden I hear something on the side of me about 30 yards in the woods doing everything I do running. I can hear it running beside me. I stop. It stops. Start walking real fast, it starts walking real fast. But I notice I get to where I can see the top of my truck way, way, way off. I can just see the top of it. I'm on kind of like a little hill, I guess. I get down there, and this thing, I got, I could hear. This is why I think it's two of them, because this thing on the side of me is parallel to me. But I can still hear old boy way back there tearing shit up, too, and screaming and grunting and making and doing his deal. Well, I get, like I said, I get like maybe 250 yards from my truck, halfway point. And this, I got something else on the side of me. It's parallel me, but it's moving in. It's it's like any minute I'm ready for it to pop out. I finally had enough, man. I shot one in the air. And I'm talking about, we're talking about a seven millimeter Magnum, pretty big gun. For down here, it's a real big gun, but they use they use that for elk and moose up in Montana. I cracked it. I cracked the shot in the air, and all of a sudden, everything stopped. It quit. Uh, this thing quit paralleling me. Old boy in the back shut up. It got real quiet. I start running again. I get to my truck. I'm whooped, but I I, I still got that feeling in the back of my head. You get in your truck. You don't know what's behind you. Get in your truck. Don't be stupid. So I'm, I stick my key, and as soon as I stick my key in my door and I lock my truck, I, I think it was the one that I seen from way back. He let off again, and it was loud, very loud. But he was probably half a mile, three quarters of a mile off. But even from that range, he sounded like he was close. I got in my truck, man. And Leaf River is nothing but dirt roads. It's, it's a wildlife management area. I'm slinging gravel. I'm doing, I'm slinging gravel. I'm, I'm out of breath talking to you, man, about this. I'm slinging gravel. I'm fish tailing, almost wrecking my truck. I finally get on the main road out of there. I finally made it to Highway 26. And I did 100 mile an hour from there and then got on Highway 15 that takes you all the way to the coast. I don't know how I didn't get stopped by a car, but I did 100 all the way home. I left, I get home, I put, I didn't even get my gun out of my truck. I stripped my clothes and got in the shower, turned it on full blast cold and just sat there and laid in the shower for about an hour. Try, 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 trying to make sense of what happened to me. You know what's fascinating, Mike? I know you had to step outside because you didn't want your kids to hear the encounter of what happened to you. Uh, Man, there's a little bit of background noise. It's not bad, though. Um, What's fascinating is the audience doesn't know you and I are on video. We can see each other. And I can tell you from doing this for so long, most of the time when people recount their encounters over the phone or on the show, they get up and they pace back and forth. And it's kind of a psychology thing. Uh, that I've noticed with a lot of people on it. It's fear when you're telling someone what happened to you. It's taken me straight. It's taken me straight back. It's just what I keep, what I, what I keep, 
what what keeps coming back to me was when he was looking at me when he was super close how 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 close to us he is yeah let me ask you mike because you got a really good look at this thing in the middle of the day uh for the audience would you kind of describe what you saw that day uh definitely humanoid uh i think this is definitely a people every bit of eight foot tall easy maybe maybe even a little bit bigger I, i'm just I'm, I'm gonna go with eight foot um very huge very uh defined uh definition of muscles definitely like in his quads in his biceps and uh his back dude was huge his, he, he was he was four and a half foot across on his back maybe maybe even five foot huge huge facial wise you know i've heard like i said I've, I've been watching your show a lot now in fact i think i'm gonna go ahead and subscribe to your show i've been catching on on uh youtube but i actually want to I'm, I'm getting it where i'm getting at is you know a lot of these people that have the that i hear on your show and other shows you know when they have these encounters it changes their life forever which it does it does change your life forever you're never gonna that's never gonna quit burning in your mind but you have some people, you know, they'll never go in the woods again. It didn't affect me that way. It, it affected me in, in the terms of I want to know more, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense, Mike. Uh, let me ask you, because you got a really, really good look at this thing through your scope. I'm curious, did it look more like a man? Did it look more like an animal? I'm curious on your impression. More in between animalistic and and uh, maybe caveman or Neanderthal face. Big, wide, profound nose, but hooded, though, like a human, but just real wide across. Uh, the, the, the lips, he had a huge, huge mouth, huge mouth, but he didn't have the big lips. He had thin lips. But, but he, I mean, I'm talking about huge mouth, like he can stick a watermelon in his mouth. He, 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 he was a big boy. He was a big boy. Yeah, that gets reported by a lot of eyewitnesses. That I've talked to many people who say, uh, I could put two softballs in the Sang's mouth and there's still room for it to eat, uh, which is huge. I mean, a huge mouth. A lot of people talk about that. I'm fascinated by the expression of the creature. Um, the expressions it was doing, would you say those were human-like? Yes. Like, when he was looking at me from the side, when I, when I, when I drew on him for about the third or fourth time, when he was close, I wasn't drawn on. I wasn't. I wasn't wearing my glasses that day. Anytime that I hunt and I have a scope, the scope is my glasses. I'm nearsighted. I can. I can see stuff like ten feet away, but anything further off, it's it's just a blur. So I, ha I have to. I had to use my scope to look at him real good. Well, he was looking at me when he turned. It, every time I would point the gun at him, he would turn his head, and he would look at me, and he would look at me with that one eye. Like and but the facial expression would be like, "Don't you do it? Don't you do it?" it it's like this thing no it knew about guns and what they do. Bang, bad, bad, bad bang stick he's got. I don't know. I think these things are highly intelligent. I think these things uh, are a people. Now, I know you're probably going to get to the point to where you're going to ask me what 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 do I think they are. I think that it's hard to say, Wes. I mean, you know, the 12-foot giant that they killed out there in uh, Afghanistan with the, with the red hair and a red beard, what was that? It's hard to say what they are. I don't know. You know, you can go, you know, you can go back to biblical times. You can go back to Enoch. I mean, is, is it DNA from fallen angels? We don't know. Is it... Is, is it uh, is it, uh, I can't think of the name, starts with the N. Nephilim. Nephilim. Is, is, is it an offspring of that, you know? All I can say is it's a very big creature, and it's covered in hair. It has a language. I, I didn't gather that on my experience, but from other experience, they seem to be like tricksters. I don't know what their intentions are. I, I don't know if these things come from another world. I don't know if they're, you know, extra-dimensional. I... I uh, or, or are they just a flesh and blood creature that is just, you know, that's their domain and they know how to hide. 
you're getting a lot of the, you know, of experiences and it's starting to come out in the open a little bit more, just like, you know, UFOs are starting to come out. The government, the government's starting to give us the lowdown on that. You know, everything's starting to come together now. So I don't know. Yeah, I hear you. Let me ask you, Mike, I'm very curious about the way it sat down. Did it sit down? You ever been at a baseball game? You see a, a catcher kind of getting that weird stance, kind of like the catcher stance. Did it sit down like that or did it sit down like a person would? It come out on all fours and it's like it scooted its butt in between its chest and sat down. It sat down and it took its uh, legs, its knees were straight up and its hands were on its side. But it, but, but um, at one point it was like digging around and stuff like in front of it, like, I don't know, maybe if it was playing like a kid playing with ants. I don't know if anything like this will ever happen again. I mean, if it, um, it's just one of them things, man. It took me months, months to do this, man. I, I was, I was going to uh, send you an email like three months ago about this, but it, 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 you know, it just took a lot of courage and it took a lot of guts. Um, it's not a, you know, when it was fresh, when it first happened, I'm not, um, I didn't go to work for a week. I didn't go to, to work for a week. I couldn't, I couldn't even talk to anybody. It, it, it affected me pretty bad, but you know, as time went on and I started listening to your show and other account, that actually helped me a lot because I knew I wasn't alone. Yeah. There's one side to encounters. I rarely address and I do a really poor job of, uh, of addressing this, but there's real PTSD after an encounter and, um, you know, a lot of what you're talking about, not going to work, not sleeping, stuff you and I talked about off the air, very, very common. Uh, even having the feeling of like, am I losing it? Am I going crazy? Did I, you know, just have a mental breakdown? I didn't really see that. Uh, everyone kind of goes through that. But uh, one question I want to ask you, it's the perfect time, I guess, to kind of address this. What was it about seeing this thing that it affected you in that way? Was it just seeing something that shouldn't exist? Well, different, well, different feelings, you know, um, when I was looking at it the whole time, I was thinking, you know, there's gotta be more than one of these things. And these things are, these things are, are these, you know, everything that I, I was taught was bull crap about these things. You know, as a kid, you know, B Bigfoot's not real. The booger's not real. That's what they use down here. They call it the booger. Don't go out in the woods or, the, you know, the boogeyman or the booger's going to get you, you know. But that was just, you know, we all thought that was folklore. Well, it's true. They're there. I guess it was just the whole reality of it. I mean, looking at this thing, looking at it, you know, the way it was looking at me, the expressions on its face, the language, I'm, and, and just just realizing we have stuff like that out there, man. It, it Just the unknown. Can I ask you about the language? I find the language fascinating because there's a lot of situations to where I think these things talk slower. And so it's, it throws a lot of people off. They think it's just some language they've never heard before or a language they don't know in the woods. But there's another vocal, and I even played this for uh, Claire in episode 515. And I asked her, I said, is this kind of what you heard? And I'm curious, Mike, in your situation, did it kind of sound like that? Is that kind of what you heard? Yeah, it was like the Tasmanian devil. Was like, uh, it was more like uh, he was talking to himself. It wasn't like he was like screaming out to somebody else. It was like he was, I don't know if he was trying to talk to me or just talk to himself, but it was kind of like, um, let's see if I can do it right. It was kind of like, oh, just, yeah, but, but, but not, not, not exactly like that. He had a lot of clicks and whistles in with it that I can't do. They definitely have a language and I definitely do think they communicate for sure. Yeah, I'm on board with them having a language. I mean, I can definitely go with that theory, especially after all the eyewitnesses I've talked to. Uh, but you know, every animal communicates out there. I could play two squirrels right now, uh, chattering back and forth. And most people will go, yeah, they're communicating back and forth. But what's weird with Sasquatch is when they talk, especially at a slower rate, it sounds like some weird ancient language. Yeah. And there's another thing I have to put out there that I, that I left out. Um, I, like I said, uh, I've been listening to a lot of your shows here lately, and you, you, have some, you have some Mississippi boys on there. 
Um, I've listened to um, uh, Kumbo and um, Kumbo and Carrie Arnold. And Carrie Arnold said something that was very, very important, and it made me reflect. These things, that all these whoops and everything, I've heard these things all my life and just thought it was other stuff. Like, like, like when they whoop, I always thought that was either coyotes or just some kind of weird bird. These things have been around me the whole time. And, and, and I just never knew what it was. They, they never shown themselves. Never knew what it was. I've heard beating on trees, just thinking it might be another hunter out there doing, you know, fixing a stand up or, or may, maybe I'm close to a house that somebody's doing construction on. Yeah, it's so strange. I've heard so many hunters say that, you know, like the whoop. They're like, I thought it was just some weird bird or the tree knocking. Um, I've heard many, I've heard many people kind of talking the way you're talking, Mike. And it makes me wonder if deep down they just don't want to know because no bird really whoops. You know what I mean? Right. And um, about. About a month and a half later, hunting season was, after this encounter, hunting season was finally over. And I took my brother with me to go retrieve my stand, but I just told, I, I never told him my encounter. I just told him that I left it there, I, you know, just, just left it. And uh, I was going to go get it at the end of the year. Well, we walked back in there, man, and uh, nothing out of the norm, man. Even, even some of the bushes that he pulled up and threw on the power line, it, it was gone. Yeah, n not even your tree stand was touched. Not touched at all. And I've heard of I've heard some encounters where pe their, their tree stands would be like twisted up and stuff. Nothing wrong with it at all. And I know you're just speculating, but I'm I'm kind of curious, Mike. What do you think was actually going on? I mean, obviously, from what I hear, it sounds like the creature didn't know you were there. It was kind of screwing you off, and then bam, you were there. Uh, but what do you think the creature was doing? And I know you're just speculating. I'm I'm curious on your opinion. You know, I've thought about that a lot, Wes. And here's what I come up with. It could be true. It could be false. Power lines are a good ambush point because deer, hogs, and stuff like that, they use power lines for corridors. And they're, they're, they're a very good ambush point. Um, I think he might have been doing the same thing I was and staying off in the bushes and waiting for something to come out. Same thing I was. And when maybe he got a whiff, whiff of me or he might have heard me when I talked to him finally. But when I did, I'll tell you what, he, he lit it up, man. He, 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 was, he, wasn't, he wasn't playing any games. He was not playing no games at all. He was, oh, man. I... I, I I think for the rest of my life, I'm I'm gonna think about that every day, probably. Now I, I might not I'm, I might not be frightened like I was by it. Like I said, I'm 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 going hunting next year, for 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 sure. But like when I go bow hunting stuff like that, I'm gonna be pa I'm gonna be packing a 45 with me. Yeah, I'm really glad I didn't take away the your love of hunting. As far as weapons go, you know, get a shotgun, take the plug out, fill it full of slugs. And uh, just don't want a game warden catch you doing that. Yeah, uh, or some triple lot buck. Yeah, anything. Um, it it just does. It, it had me scared for about a month, you know. But I, I'm I'm always gonna. If anything, I'm definitely gonna be more aware of my surroundings now. Yeah, it, it's eye opening. It'll definitely uh, make you be more aware of your surroundings after encountering one of these things. One of the questions I want to ask you, Mike, going back to the that mumbling you heard. Man, that's creepy every time I listen to it. Um, I wanted to ask you, I did a show, gosh, I can't remember how long ago it was. I think the name of the show was It Moved Like a Crackhead. And the reason why I titled the show that is... That's what the eyewitness was reporting. Um, but one thing that he said, if I remember right, it was a female creature he used to see on his property. And he said that uh, she would do these weird hand gestures and just seem to ramble, mumble to herself, almost like you would see someone who's on drugs. Um, and my question to you is, do you think it was mumbling to itself or do you think it was actually talking to you? Um, I don't know, because when it would look at me, it wouldn't talk. It was like when it was looking the other way or looking down, it was like talking. But it was this thing was talking, man. I mean, I understand that, you know, rabbits and squirrels make noises. To it. This thing was talking. This thing was talking just like me and you are. But it just was, it was in a whole different language. It was just that rough 
that rough Greek sounding blah, 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 you know, the uh, Tasmanian devil. It was, it was super weird, man. Super. It, it was definitely Twilight Zone, without a doubt. Yeah, and then the creepy part, Mike, of, of getting paced out. You know, I don't really understand that behavior because you're leaving at that point. There's really no need to harass you further, I guess, in my from my perception. But they do it all the time, and when you stop, they stop. I've heard it a million times from my witnesses. And I would imagine oh, that's almost a little bit more unnerving than actually seeing the creature because you don't know its intention and you can't really see it. Exactly. It's like he's he or her i believe it was a second one stayed yeah i mean it's they had their geometry just right man just enough in the woods to where you can see kind of see bushes moving a little bit but you can't see them and it was it, it was it was pacing me out the whole time and it was getting closer and closer and closer and i i didn't know if this thing was gonna jump on me or what so i threw a shot in the air when i did that everything ceased and another thing I want to mention, Wes, another thing I want to mention, um, a lot of these encounters, when, when one's around, everything gets quiet. N um, nothing was out of the normal. I mean, I can't really remember if there was birds chirping and stuff, but, you know, there's a, when you hear about these encounters, you hear about a profound quietness. You know, everything gets quiet. It wasn't, it wasn't so much like that. And, and another thing I wanted to mention, when, when he was standing in front of me, you hear about these things rocking back and forth like with their head and stuff. He wasn't doing that either. He was just, he was, he was standing still. He was moving his head, you know, like to look down and away from me, but he wasn't like rocking back and forth. Yeah, I hear you. It's fascinating, Mike. A lot of eyewitnesses, you know, they'll say it looked very human-like or looked more like a Neanderthal. And then some eyewitnesses you talk to and they're like, it looked very much like a, um, a great ape, but with hum some human features and then other eyewitnesses will say, no, it was very much like a chimp, but with some human-like features. It's a fascinating topic, especially, you know, with the language that you heard. And and a little while back, I, I talked about four different types, and it was just a crazy theory I had based on eyewitnesses. And the Bigfoot world took that, and it's canon, and now they have charts and maps over the four types. And, you know, I don't know if there's four types. There could be 20 types. There could be one type. No one really knows, but it is fascinating to talk to eyewitnesses around the country and, and kind of get their perception, their interpretation of what they saw. And as far as the different types, I've kind of wondered sometimes if it was adaptation as opposed to evolution, but I don't know. I mean, that would affect more size than physical features, I would imagine. Uh, but it, you know, and a lot of hunters like yourself, Mike, they'll say, I couldn't shoot it. It looked too human. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've heard, like I said, I've been watching your, sh your show a lot. I mean, like, I'm not lying. I probably watch when I get home at night, I watch at least three of your episodes. Try I'm trying to catch up with is what I'm trying to do. And they're, they're, you know, an hour and so long. Um, and another thing you're getting, a, you're getting a lot of, I understand you're getting a lot of dog man stuff going on. I'm gonna tell you something. If, the, if, the, if that would have been a dog man, I would have definitely shot it. I would have, I, I would have definitely shot it. But it was just too human looking. It, too, it, it, if when I was looking at it, I was thinking, you know, I'm. I was thinking to myself, I might have to kill this thing to get out of here, I'm, because it's not going nowhere. But if I kill this thing, what do I do? Do I do? Do I call the game warden? Or are they going to lock me up for killing a person? You know what I mean? That's how, that's how human this thing was. Yeah, there's kind of that old argument out there, you know, should one of these creatures be shot and brought in? And people are very passionate on both sides of uh, how they feel about that. And a lot of people don't like me to say it, but I, I think that one should be shot and brought in. I'll tell you why. There's a lot of most hunters, which is the majority of people that run into them in the woods, are armed to the teeth. And it, when you put a person who's in a high stress uh, fears running, adrenaline's pumping, and then you put a gun in their hand, they're probably going to start shooting. And in this situation, it can it can go very bad. Uh, imagine being, imagine if the government, and it's not that we need the government to tell us if something's true or not, but imagine if it was well known, hey, Mike, you could run into these creatures, there's a possibility you could run into one, 
even if they release some of what they know about it. Hey, if you get in this situation, do this. Um, these creatures are already being shot. But just imagine having that knowledge prior to your encounter. You know, you probably would have handled it way different. You know, it's funny you said that because, like I said, after watching a lot of episodes and stuff like that, if I would already say, say the government finally acknowledges these things and said, look, there's a, you know, they got signs up saying there's a chance that, you know, if you're out here, you might encounter this. Okay. You might not ever see one because I think these things know. I think, I think these things can get it. Like, I think more people that don't have an idea about these things have more encounters than people that are, that are looking for them. I don't know what it is. I just believe that. It's like that old saying, uh, ignorance is bliss. It really is bliss. Uh, let me ask you, Mike, would you want to see another one? Not that close and not, not alone. Would I like to be with some people and maybe see one? you know, on the side of the road with some eye shine and we put some flashlights on it and we can haul ass real quick if we got to. Yes. But like I said, I had a high powered rifle in my hand and I'm sure if I would, if this thing would have stood still long enough and it was threatening my life and I would have put the bead right between its eyes and pulled the trigger, I would have dropped it because it's a big caliber. Maybe not. I don't know. He was big, but Who's to say, you know, I would have done that and got halfway out the woods and his brother didn't like the fact that I shot him and he comes and twists my head off. That's how big these things are. Yeah, I don't think that these are solitary creatures. And I think a lot of times when you see one, they're never alone. Just like that one that was pacing you out, you know? <laughs> exactly. And it, and it sounded big just like him. Yeah, it's a fascinating account, Mike, and I know it's probably not for you, but for to listen to it, it is. I know you lived it, but and I think you did the right thing in leaving. Uh, you didn't really freak out, which, you know, we're all internally freaking out, but you didn't really show it at the time. And then, uh, you know, with it pacing you out, shooting off into the air as opposed to shooting off in the direction of the creature, I think was smart. I don't necessarily think that they fear guns. Because uh, there's a lot of encounters that makes me think that they really don't care about the sound of a gun going off. But there is a lot of situations to they will kind of back off when you do that, as long as you're not shooting in their direction, which is bizarre to me. But um, I really think that you did everything right, man. There's a lot going on in Mississippi. I would love to get a chance to talk to some of these Mississippi boys and just see, you know, just to see how that they took it over, you know, throughout the years. I think one of them is Bigfoot Odyssey. Uh, I've tried to contact him, but with no avail. Yeah, if you want, I know Kerry. I'll, I'll send him your information. He's probably just working. Every time I talk to him, he's working like nonstop. Um, I'm sure he'll get back to you. But if you want, I'll send him your uh, info. And for the audience, Kerry Arnold has the YouTube channel Bigfoot Odyssey. He interviews um, Bigfoot researchers and eyewitnesses and Kerry's good people. He's probably one of the nicest people in the quote unquote Bigfoot community. I don't know if Kerry would like me saying he's in the Bigfoot community, but uh, Kerry's good people, man. Yeah. I, I, um, his encounter that he had was up above Columbia, Mississippi. I'm familiar with that area and I heard his whole encounter and I'm going to tell you what our encounters are, are very, very, a lot, a lot, a lot of similarities, especially in the Sasquatch itself. The way that he, you know, the the way that he uh, said it looked and everything. It pretty close. Yeah, Mike, and and like I said, I, I will. Uh, I'll send your information over to Kerry and ask him to uh, to give you a call. Kerry's great. He's probably one of the nicest people in the quote unquote Bigfoot community. He doesn't really fit because he's he's intelligent and he's kind to people. And he doesn't fit the narcissist mold that most of the Bigfoot community absolutely fits. Seems to, it seems to draw that type of person for some reason. But uh, Kerry's definitely not that way. And I appreciate you taking the time to come on and, and share what happened to you. I, I really enjoyed talking with you, Mike. Oh, man, I appreciate everything. I'm going to tell you what, this is, it, it, it took some kahunas, man. But I'll tell you what, this is a great weight off my shoulder, man great way to i mean i feel a lot better it's a positive thing it's a good thing thanks again mike i appreciate you coming on no problem man thank you
And that's it for tonight, everyone. Remember, if you've had an encounter, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchronicles.com. If you get a chance to check out sasquatchronicles.com, you can become a member and get additional shows. Until next time, everyone, have a great weekend.